Hey folks, this is Johnny. Welcome to another Home Studio Trainer Show. And today we're going to take a look at saving some CPU uh, when you're using your VST instruments. Now, I am going to try to get back to uh, the beginner basics uh, because there's so much good content for some of the heavier users out there. I thought that this would be a really good time for me to focus a little bit more on the beginners again. And we're going to go through uh, many of the new features and things like that that I haven't gone through yet. So uh, bear with me. So if you guys could, I'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. Follow me over on Rumble. And if you click the link in the description, Patreon uh, is a way to support me. You can support me for as little as a buck. All right. So let's go to the classroom. All right. You can see uh, over here that I have a song pulled up. Each of the tracks is a separate VST instrument. So I've got uh, Impact. And I've got presence on these channels here. I have Deep Flight 1 for my pad sound, and then I have my tie for my lead synth. So what kind of CPU am I using up here? So let's see. If we look over here, we can see zhunk, that I am using this much. Speaking about 30. And if I go ahead and I expand all of these, boom, there we go. Now we can see everything that I'm using, including whatever plugins I have on the channels. <coughs> so believe it or not, Presence uh, for this particular sound is using the most CPU. I think that's the guitar sound. All right. So how can we uh, save some CPU? All right, we're going to do this. Let's go ahead and shrink this back. We'll put this guy down here. Remember, it was peaking at about 30, 31. So we're going to take uh, drums. I'm going to hold shift. Uh, drums, bass, and piano, and the organ. I'm going to take those, and I'm going to right-click, and I am going to say transform audio track. Now, I don't want it to render all of the channels, so I'm going to leave this unchecked. We want it to render whatever inserts are here. We want it to preserve the instruments in case I want to go back. We want to remove the instruments so that we save on the CPU. All right, so if you watch over here in the pool, you are going to see all of the audio conversions. Bam! There's one, and there's the drums, there's the bass. And there we go. There's the piano. And that's it. All right, cool. So where are the other ones? Did, oh, I only checked those. <laughs> All right, so let's see what the CPU difference is. Let's go ahead and zoom in and hit play. <laughs> Pretty darn good. That's a lot of savings. There you go. So you can see that the savings can be huge, especially if you're a heavy VST user. Now, it is important to remember that I have a little tiny machine. I got a little Mac Mini M1 with only 8 gig of RAM. So for me, something like this is crucial. So let's see how much lower it can go. Let's go ahead and turn off the devices. So let's see, let's go with the acoustic guitar, the strings, the pad, and the lead synth that I thought I rendered the first time. There you go. Uh, let's go ahead, right click. We're gonna say transform to audio track. Uh, let's see, so we're going to actually render just the inserts. You can see that these instruments here don't have the option to do all of them. So there you go, that works. And watch the pool. There we go, strings, pads, and the lead synth. There we go. So now we have an audio version of all of our tracks. <laughs> and there it is, 3%. So now, the great thing about this, and of course many of you know, but the uh, some of the beginners might not, is that at any time I can right click on any of the tracks and I can say transform to instrument track and it puts everything back where it was and it loads up the instrument and whatever plugins were on the track. OK, 
Okay, so now if I choose to undo all of them, I can go ahead and do this. Let's see, should, let's see, can I highlight? Okay, I'm actually gonna undo that. There we go. So now all of them are audio tracks. So now I'm gonna select the first one. I'm gonna hold shift, gonna, gonna whoops. I'm gonna hit shift, gonna hit the last one. I'm going to right click, I'm going to say transform to instrument track. <clears throat> all right, so what it's doing here is it's putting all the VST instruments back on each of the tracks and removing the audio from the track but it is keeping the audio in the pool, which is really handy, especially if you want to go back to something that you rendered earlier in addition to returning to the instrument track. So we're almost good there. There we go. So everything is there, and we still have our audio renders. So if for any reason at any point you hit something and you lose some MIDI and you can't go back because of an undo situation or something like that, you have the audio as a backup. So that makes it really simple. All right, that's going to do it. So the transformed audio is hugely useful, especially for somebody with a computer like mine. I've only got eight gig of RAM. It's only in, uh, it's only, it's like a three-year-old M1. So something like this is perfect. All right, so I hope that you guys found that helpful and I will see you all in the next video.